OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Welcome, everyone. We're so happy that you're here with us. We are talking about Canvas and collaborating and where agencies have been and the journey to get where they've been. So we're glad you're here. This is a very open session. Um, we have uh, Tanya Cobb, who is online. She's part of our panel. Uh, she's from, if you want to give us a wave, she's from uh, uh, Santa Monica, Malibu. And over, would you two like to introduce yourselves? We have also two other panelists here that have joined us, Marcy England from Corona Noca, Norco, and Monica Cueva from San Diego Continuing College. So um, we're happy that you all could be here. Would you like to un unmute yourself? Also with us is our fellow colleague here, Ellie Friedman, who is running our chat and admitting folks as they come, come in. So we'll start, we can start over here. We'll have a little introduction and talk about Canvas, where, where you are with your journey. And our real purpose today is really just to have time to collaborate. So we just want to know, and people, other people want to know, what are other, what are we doing with Canvas? So um, without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and... Okay. Made a quick the error it's in the bottom left. The bottom. Yeah, that went. went. There it went. Just a little bit. Here we go. Here is sort of our agenda, and uh, we may be, we may have a little less, a little more time, really, to just talk in section two, just sort of. What are our panelists' experience with Canvas? Maybe we'll start with them first and then go back and talk about where you are and any questions that you have. And if that's okay with everyone, and uh, that way we can get as much as we need to out. Today's our, here are our panelists. Again, would you like to say a few words? We'll start with Monica, move to Tonya, and then Marcy. Hi everyone, I'm Monica Cueva. I teach for the San Diego College of Continuing Education and I am our ESL technology coordinator and I'm also teaching an online vocational English as a second language class for intermediate high level ESL students. Tag, hear it, Marcy. <laughs> Oh, okay. No, I think I should have said Tanya, but go ahead, Marcy. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marcy England. I'm the assistant principal at Corona Narco Adult School, and I'm also the technology team lead um, among lots of the other roles that go along with being an assistant principal. <laughs> All your hats you wear. And sorry about that, Tanya. Tanya's no worries. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. I'm trying to find you, though, um, so we can see you. There we go. Okay, um, I'm Tanya Cobb. I am the uh, EL Civics Distance Education and Canvas Lead at Santa, Santa Monica Malibu Adult School. I also um, uh, teach credit ESL at Cypress College and at Coastline Community College. Happy to be here. Great, and would you mind introducing yourselves? We have a really nice, tidy group here. Maybe we could have a little introduction here. Sure. <laughs> uh, Michael Delaney, I teach advanced low ESL at Eastside Adult Ed in San Jose. And a few months ago, I became our Canvas admin. Um, I've been using Canvas for a couple of years, and I'm interested to hear how other people are using it and what struggles you've been through. He, he's the one that attends most of our sessions online. Okay. He's a regular. He's a regular. As personal mistakes. As no, no. As is Tanya. Uh, Darwin, would you like to go next? Hi, my name is Dallas. I'm from Yucaipa Adult School. I teach ABE Math and Advanced ESL. Very happy to be here. Thank you. And where where is your agency with um, Canvas? How have you have you started? Or well, you just find out be the exploratory uh, adventure to see what we have and what we can do because oh, okay. we don't have it yet. So nice, fabulous. 
Okay, and then on, um, yes, Ellie. And me, um, I'm Ellie Friedman, and I teach um, U.S. citizenship here at Chula Vista Adult School, and I also teach advanced ESL composition at Grossmont College, which is where I use Canvas and love Canvas. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I tried to get us to use it here, but they didn't want to spend the money. Okay. Well, you know, with CDLC, the first 50 licenses are free. I know it's a, it's a bargain. Uh, so, okay, and then online, if I could have uh, Michelle, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Uh, yes, hi, my name's Michelle Raymond. I'm um, here from Placer School for Adults in Northern California. And um, we're just getting started on implementing Canvas. A few of us have been using it. So um, yeah, excited to <laughs> <for> more. <laughs> nice. And if I could have uh, Patricia, if you wouldn't mind unmuting. Hi, Patricia. Patricia Hernandez. I work with Tanya at Santa Monica Malibu. I work in, uh, I'm a citizenship instructor, but I'm really, you know, we're going to make this transition to, to Canvas. So I love, that, I love that you're backing up your friend there. That's exactly. Moral support. exactly. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And then um, we have our our last person, the AEDG 7 D3. I hate to call you by the number, but if you wouldn't mind un unmuting and, and introducing yourself. Or not. That's okay. <laughs> Okay, um, it could be just something else. And so what we'll do is we're going to pass this one. And we have six questions for our panelists, but that doesn't mean that you can't ask your own questions because this is the beautiful thing about having a small group is that you can just ask as you will. So um, our first question, how did the Canvas journey begin for you? And within your agency, how far has your agency progressed? And who would like to go first from our panelists? Okay, Tanya. <laughs> um, so we started by participating in the Sacramento County Office of Education cohort. Um, and I think that was along with the um, CAPE project as well last June. Um, sort of all jumbled as to how it was happening. Um, then we entered into like an MOU um, with adult education canvas. Um, then we, so if we take a step back from that, I had used canvas uh, for several years, even pre pandemic. And so, you know, I was using canvas with my students, the free version uh, with my students at the adult school. And then, you know, we started um, hearing about these special projects and whatnot. So we got involved. And um, then we um, started developing uh, training first for the admins. Uh, and so that's me, that's um, one of our uh, administrators um, and an office staff member. And they had no experience with Canvas whatsoever. Um, and frankly, we're quite reticent about it um, at all. And so, um, so we started from there and then, you know, through the, the distance learning cooperative um, as well, then we developed like, a, I developed like a implementation timeline, um, you know, tried to create buy-in um, from everyone. And once, so I think, I think maybe that should stop there. Um, so I'm not sure how far down <laughs> where our journey began, um, I should go. But uh, eventually once the administrators were trained, then teachers participated in uh, paid training, which I think was key. Um, they went through like the Canvas for Teachers training modules, the first four modules. Um, they, uh, we did, you know, some face-to-face -face interaction, but mostly it was all um, online. Um, they would have homework and things like that going through the modules. Um, and they had the opportunity to uh, play. Um, and by opportunity, I mean, they had, um, we financially supported that, right? For them to be able to explore and play around with Canvas. Um, so that's how we began. Um, I'll stop there. Come from Canvas. 
And um, and would you would you two like to tell your story then? Yeah, I'll, I'll go. So we started Canvas in about I think it was 2018. We were part of the 1819 DLAC cohort um, that did the Digital Literacy Academy through OTAN. And our goal was to implement implement Canvas in the high school equivalency program. There were a lot of pen and paper packets, and we just thought that it would be really great to implement it there and have more usability where students like digitize that program. Uh, what happened was that we were successful there and then we had half of our teachers using Google Classroom and half using Canvas in a pandemic sort of situation. And we were really struggling to get students on both routes. So we had to pick, we had to pick a lane and because of the transitional digital support that Canvas offers, like if our students are transitioning to community college or beyond, they need to be on Canvas. And because Canvas, we were looking at Canvas and Google Classroom for, we were looking at them both side by side at the same time. And we just found that Canvas was much more user-friendly for adult learners. Uh, the way it interacts on your cell phone from the front side and the back side. And so as far as our journey, after we made that commitment, we also made the large financial commitment to purchase enough Canvas licenses so that we could really roll out to our entire school. And so all programs, ESL, high school diploma, actually high school diploma is on using Edgenuity. We did we decided that works as its own LMS. Um, our CTE programs, ESL and high school equivalency are all now on um, Canvas. It was not easy to get where we are. Like we started really small, but we're institutionally wide using Canvas now. Um, and that was really hard. <laughs> so that's where we're at. I feel really proud about it. <laughs> that Morocco shade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you asked questions? Or... Absolutely. Let's ask questions. How do your teachers feel about that? Yeah, so um, with change, always with change comes, everybody takes change differently. So um, it's hard. <laughs> it is hard. It's hard. <laughs> it's really hard. And so one thing that was interesting, and maybe we will get into this a little bit more in a couple other questions, but one thing that was really interesting is those of us on the tech team were so excited about Canvas, and we were like Canvas cheerleaders for a large portion of our work, and we actually started um, kind of annoying the people that were like, I actually really like this packet or this format that I'm doing. And when we talk about things, uh, Karen said, this is like a tell all. We share the good and the bad <laughs> yes. here today. And so when we talk, it's a safe place. So we really were a little, I would recommend giving a lot of time for the late adopters. Uh, just give a lot of time because we have teachers now, what is it 2023? It's been five years. We have teachers now that say, okay, I'm ready. And in the beginning, we forced it. We were like, everybody needs to be on Canvas and we'll support you. And it's going to be great because you'll have support, but that it just takes time. And so I wish we would have said, this is going to be great. And when you're ready, we're ready. So knowing that there, it's never going to be everyone on. Does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been our experience. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like you're pushing it really, very well. I'm sure that we haven't mandated it, so people have not taken it up. They've gone to some trainings, but then they don't follow through. Yeah, and we haven't mandated every class should be on Canvas. And at our last tech team meeting, we we went through the list of every single teacher and talked about how are they all using Canvas in their classroom. And we have a group that are not using it. It's mandated, but they're not using it. But we want them to still feel good about coming to work and the interactions they have with their students. So we're just continuing to um, tread lightly. Karen, yes. Tanya has a question. Oh, Tanya, you have your hand up. I just wanted to respond to the question about how the teachers felt um, 
I think part of our, we're not even a year in yet. So we're still, you know, like ramping up, but, and we might get into this later, but the um, being willing to like pivot, you know, when necessary and when teachers or staff, because we were trying to, we are trying to implement it school wide, but starting really um, slowly. Um, but being willing when teachers or staff are like, this is too much, because we are also at, at the same time we're going through WASC. Um, we've also had, you know, some turnover and all of that. And so, um, you know, we had to be willing to kind of chill, you know, and um, slowly ramp up. But also when there are instances where, um, for example, one of our um, office staff, one who was, you know, quite reticent at the beginning, um, she's now implemented, you know, like our deliverables and such are now all through Canvas. So whether some people, you know, are ready or not, you know, we're gently uh, nudging them that in that direction by showing them how useful it can be, how um, efficient, you know, using Canvas can be. So, you know, they're coming along a little, you know, kicking and screaming, but they're coming along. Fantastic. Maraca, I, I did shake the Maraca plate earlier. <laughs> can, can I go back, um, Marcy? Yeah. Is it possible for a teacher to partially use Canvas? Yes. Okay. 100%. Okay. And so if somebody feels like it's beneficial for this school, if they have to do it all day long, then that's that's good also. Yeah. And, and actually, it's really interesting at our last meeting when we went through teacher by teacher and we said, how are they using Canvas? Some teachers, we never anticipated this, but some teachers only use Canvas as a classroom management tool. So everything they teach is housed in Canvas. They have Canvas up. We For ESL, we have Ventures, which integrates wonderfully with Canvas and they use the Canvas book, but they're not a, doing any class assignments. They're not necessarily putting students in a classroom, but they're using it to manage their class. And that is a huge step. And the class actually functions better when it's when it's managed, if, okay, in my opinion, it functions <laughs> better when it's managed. So yeah, there's there's different levels of implementation, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, we're here for your opinion. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Like, <laughs> right? And I think my friend yes. has it <laughs> Yes, I want to bring one to go <laughs> into the conversation too, a different point of view. And welcome, Ryan. We're just talking about Canvas, and this is our question. We have Tanya Cobb, also San Monica, Santa Monica, Malibu, um, who's also a panelist, and then our friends uh, online there. So Monica, would you like to take over yeah. your experience so, and piggyback on another? Yes, 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 of course. Thank you. Um, so we are San Diego College of Continuing Education, and we are under the community college district. So we follow suit with a lot of, you know, what the community colleges are doing. And so we were using the Blackboard learning management system, and we migrated to Canvas in about, it was, I think, 2017, 2018. It's a different thing altogether. Yeah, so, because I use Blackboard. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, and so at that time, it was just, we had maybe just a handful or a little bit more of our ESL faculty that were using a learning management system, so that had to learn how to use Canvas. Um, we just had a handful of online or hybrid classes in our program. And then, um, it, you know, then the pandemic came and um, the only learning management system and training and professional development that we had was Canvas. So all of our faculty had to learn how to teach online and how to teach with Canvas within one week's time. So that was a very stressful, I mean, it was stressful for many reasons, but that was one of the reasons. And so we did offer some boot camps for that one week of training. And um, it wasn't, we weren't mandating that faculty use Canvas. They could have used any other management system, but it was that we had the expertise and, and professional development to help them use Canvas to teach online. Um, but they did have other options. Um, and our, our district does provide a 20 hour online certification online teaching certification course where they learn about Canvas, but they also learn just how to teach online. They learn about accessibility um, and, and they just, they learn how to teach asynchronously and synchronously. And so that helps, but teachers during the pandemic, they weren't even able to take that course until, you know, after they'd already been teaching sure. online because right, right. um, they just didn't have the time. 
Um, but one thing that was very helpful is that we did in our program, we developed what we call the teacher tech corner. And it's where we house all our teaching materials, training materials in a canvas shell. Um, so it's more of a repository for teachers. And that really helped at the beginning because teachers had to go into Canvas to access those materials. They were able to see a model of you know, what a good Canvas course might look like. They were also able to experience it as a student and, and see how do the students navigate Canvas. And so that just, you know, we still use it now today, but I think it served a very different purpose at the beginning of the Canvas closures. Um, and then as Marcy had mentioned, the Ventures, many of our teachers use Ventures textbook series and they have for every level, every unit, there is a module in Canvas. Um, many of our teachers have really appreciated that, and it just has taken a lot of pressure off of our teachers to be able, you know, to develop the content in Canvas. They now have this content ready to go from Ventures. So does anyone have any questions so far? No, for sorry, our said there was Ventures units and Ventures modules in Canvas? Yeah, so if they use the Ventures textbook series, mm -hmm. Ventures has created one module for every unit of okay. every level of the textbook. Yeah. So if you're just joining us, welcome. Um, our panelists here today are Tanya um, Cobb. She's a lead Canvas person at her site, Santa Monica Malibu, uh, Marcy England, Corona Norco, and Monica Acueva from San Diego Community, San Diego Continuing College, San Diego College of Continuing Education. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's a mouthful. It's an alliteration for sure. <laughs> and hosting us today in her beautiful, great class is Ellie Friedman. So thank you for having us. So, uh, okay, any questions yet so far about what we've heard so far? Okay, uh, Michael. Question, but because we use Ventures as well. Mm -hmm. And so and I've been using the, the, the new shells. Mm -hmm. Last year, there was something else in common in Canvas Commons. Yeah, just Commons, but it was different too. We tried using that. I thought that was cool, but the new stuff is really great. But I'm curious, do you make, do you import the shells for the teachers or do you have them do it themselves or a little bit of both? Or... So for us, we, we give them the step-by-step -step instructions that we've created, not from Cambridge, for faculty to do it themselves. We do have mentors that help them. Um, but that process has seemed to be easy enough for our faculty to be able to do with our guidance and instructions. Um, we do also use Pearson um, Future textbook series, which also has modules, and those are a lot more complicated. So for those ones, I have imported them all into my Canvas account, and then faculty will just request it from me, and I just share it with them. And that seems to be a lot easier. Uh, Tanya, you have your hand up? Yes, just wanted to respond to that as well. So uh, sort of this on the same lines, I will import, you know, um, things from Commons or a publisher, you know, whatever materials from Commons into like the master course. So because I'm the EL Civics lead as well, so I'll create materials from that. And then I put the teachers into my course. And so they can then use those materials accordingly because they're, we're not at, or our teachers are not yet um, at the place where they're ready to create their own courses um, and have teach have uh, students involved as well. So um, that's a way for them to do that if they so choose. But we are uh, hoping that um, some teachers will start to create their own courses and um, do some of that importing themselves. Uh, they have been trained on it, but um, you know, giving them that support, that's how uh, we do it at my school. Can I ask a follow-up question? When you said master course, you mean you make like a blueprint course like that? Not exactly a blueprint. Like because I am creating the materials for EL Civics, I will um, put everything in Canvas, right? So everything about the objective, all of the instructional materials, the assessments, all of that. And then I put the teachers in that course. So when the teachers get ready to use those materials, they can use it directly from the course that um, I've created. Um, or they can, you know, import it into their own course. Um, so I think there's a technicality difference between like a blueprint course and what I'm calling a master course. Um, I think that we will, you know, get there where it's a blueprint course, but not, not yet. For now, it's just a master course. So I will typically import like everything from the publisher, but sometimes it's too much. Um, 
or um, you know, I, I try to be very selective as to what I actually might use for a particular objective or a particular course. And so I've already done that work. And so then the teachers can use what they will. I hope I answered your question. So for those that are just starting, we tried at first, we thought, oh, this is so cool. Teachers are gonna love this. They're gonna love building their own classrooms and the freedom. And so we kept things like really open and it created overwhelm. And then we had a few teachers that created some really great courses. And once we recognize, let's take those courses and then copy them for the other teachers. And we so we we do everything because we want. The, we want this concierge VIP service to get everyone on board and liking it. So we do it all, but we have a technology team. Quick, yeah. Marcy, yeah. Uh, what percentage of your instructors are using Canvas? Yeah. yeah. So probably we're at about 75 percent right now that's excellent that includes our i but that includes cte yeah no no cte no, is using great. it completely and in my mind it's, it's all of them yeah so and how long when did you start implementation 2018. so this has been a, a it is a journey yeah yeah it's a journey so that's why like one of my things is start small start small but cte uses it great esl we have 50 percent of our teachers but overall probably 75 percent do you all want to say how many percentage wise you have on i know tanya's real yours is very new within the year um, with a and i think it depends on what you call on <laughs> um Right. If you mean on like they are creating their own courses and students are enrolled and all of that, um, uh, zero, uh, zero percent. But if you mean, um, you know, what percentage of our school and that includes office staff as well, because we were really intentional about making this, you know, a school wide effort for everyone, for teachers and for staff. And so um, they are, you know, 100 percent of teachers and staff are involved in Canvas in some way. Um, again, they may not, you know, um, like it, <laughs> um, but, you know, we are gradually ramping up to making even our student orientation, um, the office uh, staff work type things um, also on Canvas. So teachers, you know, have to interact with Canvas um, one way or another. And if they want to be a part of, you know, um, uh, what we're trying to do down the road, you know, things like developing a distance ed program and all of that. Um, they will be enrolled in a course um, that we're creating as well. So, so one way or another, they are involved in that way, um, but they're not, we don't have anyone who is really all in um, completely. And, and for us, oh, um, for us in our ESL program, we have, um, I would say almost 150 faculty. So it is a very large program. And right now, all of our online and high flex classes, which is probably 60% of our program currently, they are all using Canvas. And then we even have a large majority of our on site faculty that are using Canvas. And how long was that? Um... Uh, well, with the pandemic, it didn't take long at all. <laughs> Because that they were week. forced. Yeah, it was that one week they were right. forced on, on the campus. But I think if we, you know, if we hadn't had that pressure from the pandemic, it probably would have taken from 2017, 2018 until now to have not even as many faculty as we have on right now. So, yeah. Any other question? Two questions. If I'm starting to teach at your school today, mm -hmm. am I able to access the other advanced ESL teachers' mm -hmm. lessons? Mm -hmm. And that's no problem. Nobody's offended. Like I did all this work, and shame on you. Uh, it would just be a matter of either putting you into the course, like putting you into the course, or copying that course and moving it over to you. We copy the course. We keep our courses really basic, and we have a course for each level. And mm -hmm. so it's like, hey, come on in. You're teaching advanced. Great. Here's your course. And we've even had teachers. We've had rollover, right? Teacher rollover. We just move one teacher out and put the new teacher in. So it's almost like the course belongs to the class level 
not to and the, the school, class but the instead of instructor. the actual instructor. If an instructor yeah. wants to go in and personalize it, wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But really, it's a it's a classroom. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I see your hand. Yeah, I wanted to mention more at, at college. Um, we have in addition to our own class containers, there's the division and the departmental containers where anyone can post lessons that they like and and feel that other people can benefit from. So I found that very helpful because I had no training and I'm 75. So, you know, technology is not intuitive to me, but I found Canvas to be very intuitive. I was able to jump in with both feet and do things with it that I had no idea you could do. And my classes went online with the pandemic and then the people that enjoy doing online were allowed to continue. So um, so I write all my own materials, everything's there. And I think the best thing about Canvas to me was the availability of the 24 seven hotline. Yeah. So, you know, they kind of knew me by my first name. <laughs> but there was no question that they couldn't answer, you know, Saturday night, 3 a.m. Right. They were there and could help. Yes. So I, 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 I agree with what Tanya said, probably 100% of the teachers at Grossmont College are on Canvas on canvas right. but you know some use it minimally and others i mean for me it was the whole class everything was there videos it, it was it was just wonderful we're rock up for ellie <laughs> so monica you mentioned that your school has a 20 hour uh, certification for teaching online is that would that be available to someone like myself I don't believe so. It's only available to faculty within the district. Within the district, yeah. okay. But at one does have some really good Canvas courses available. Some are free, some are for a fee. Um, but I would definitely look into at one. Yeah, thank you. Monica, okay. is that, do you, do you have a, is it an acronym for that? Is that spot certification? Um, or, at one? No, I mean the one, the trainings that you guys do at the college. Um, it's through our online learning pathways team. They're the ones that have developed the Canvas course, the 20 hour certification course. And they're the ones that actually provide the feedback to faculty and it's offered every semester. Yeah. Canvas offers training too. Like I'm sure you can go to instructor or, or OTAN offers some training. Free. Yeah. 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 Get all that training. Tons of Canvas. There's just stuff tons happening. of Canvas. Yeah. Maybe you should make it a, a badge or a certification. I was going to say, I think the official, if you go through the official training, and I can't remember which, if it was through CDLC or CAPE or what, but there is badging that goes along with it. There is, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I see it. In each side, our experience, we use this Growing with Canvas program. I think it's the instructor makes it. Yes. And a fair number of teachers went through it, but then... Like just a month ago, I was talking to some of them, helping them with different things, and you forget. So yeah, the training is not necessarily going to make everything fly. Yeah. You really need to get in there. It's the doing. Yeah. It's the doing. Yeah. Yeah, it really it's the is. doing. And really, I think what's great about that though is that they can always go back to it, right? They can always sort of you know retrain themselves or you know revisit um, those training modules. Um, we just did this um, the other day because we have monthly um our learning committee our learning community is based on technology so monthly we're focusing on this right and so the administrator wanted me to review canvas quizzes and so i went back to uh the training and you know replayed the video that they had seen you know way back last summer but just forgotten all about and showed them the various ways that we have actually been using <laughs> canvas uh quizzes and they didn't even realize right in the ways that they're interacting with it because you have to kind of uh, think outside the box sometimes with Canvas, right? Like you think it's this, you know, monstrosity and it, it can be very stressful, but really, no, there are so many things that you can do with it. I don't know what someone said earlier that made me think of that, but um, think outside the box. And so, you know, the Canvas quizzes is what we would use to the office staff, for example, um, to turn in deliverables, things that you have to do at the end of the term and to acknowledge that you did it, we just created, or she just created a Canvas quiz, right? Uh, a survey. And so anyway, with revisiting that, that um, that reminded the staff of that, you know, possibility um, by, you know, having them revisit what they had done last summer. 
Hey, uh, so moving on to question two, what will your agency look like when Canvas is implemented? Like, what is what is your agency's hope or goal? Mercy, you want to go first? All right, if you all want to pass, if this is just a bad question, too, we can say no. skip. I have a list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So because I could say it's implemented, but is it implemented successfully? We can always do better. So a cool thing that we see happening where I see an end road is when students have been enrolled in a different class, they enter a new class, they say they open up Canvas to their dashboard and they say, is where is this class? Like they're expecting the class in their Canvas dashboard. That happens rarely right now. I like to see that happen every fall. Like, oh, how do I open my dash? Uh, not they know how to open their dashboard, but where's my class? So where Canvas is fully an expected classroom format for all of our students. And then when teachers can support teachers, right now the technology team, which our teachers are supporting teachers, but the way they, that break room conversation of like, oh, I had this really good lesson, come to my Canvas and, and we'll get it for you. So I, I see that as what it looks like when we operate it fully. Nice. And, and for us, I think, um, even though we do have, you know, a majority of our faculty currently using Canvas, we would just like to, the same, you know, similar to what Marcy said, we just want everyone to be on it, whether you're teaching online or on site, because it's a very valuable resource for our on-site instructors as well. And it doesn't matter how much they use Canvas, it could just be just have a home page and on that home page you have essential course information as long as students are getting familiar with logging into canvas clicking on their course and accessing information mm -hmm. that's what we want okay. yes are you well depending on what your lms is i mean your student information is implemented so i guess more to mm -hmm. marthy are you are you integrated with asap with your canvas are you on that gives me some like uh, <laughs> those were some hard days. <laughs> Michelle's working on this too with yeah. ASAP. So yeah, so we are somewhat like we found a really great workaround. And if you need the workaround, but we basically upload a CSV file after every registration. And that we spent hours and hours and hours and time with ASAP with their technology developer, I mean, and we never got across the bridge to a good, uh, uh, so we figured it out on our end with our district, but we upload a CSV file and we can give you, we, we have the instructions on how to do that and it has just like saved us. So, um, so that means you'll upload all your student data from ASAP into Canvas, but I'm assuming you don't download uh, grades or anything out of Canvas into into ASAP. Is that right? No, because we don't have any grades. We, we the only courses that have grades is high school diploma, and they're using Edgenuity. What about completers? Completers, we we're not following that, and we don't track that in Canvas. EFLs. No, we're not we're not moving any data between the two right. goals, but yeah, it's, no. So so is it in, in the in the global sense, is it is it is it is it advantageous for a school to move to Canvas? I mean just to integrate Canvas as, as an instructional LMS and why if it okay, if we know if we maybe won't get there. It's like the majority of us across the state use ASAP. Right. Could be something else one day. Like L Unified, I think they have their own thing. Um, but we have Canvas. Um, is it is it better for instruction for the Yes. So <laughs> wholeheartedly, yes. I think you're talking about apples and oranges when you're comparing Canvas and ASAP. Like they have. Yes, you can integrate, and of course, Canvas doesn't talk to TE either, which you know does does wow. present some issues. But like they have two different jobs, they have you know, and uh, so to answer your question about like instructionally, does should a program go to Canvas? Uh, that's a resounding yes from my viewpoint. 
Awesome. Okay, I so think we're an ad administrator. Yeah. Now, you know, kind of like, so we're talking, we have three, basically three student data information systems, instructional platform mm -hmm. that we're dealing with. So we have for us ASAP, mm -hmm. we have TE, mm -hmm. um, and now Canvas, mm -hmm. but it would have been like we have Blackboard or something like yeah. that. Something like that. So I or Google think Classroom, like, yeah, yeah. So I think the biggest connection between ASAP and Canvas is recording hours. So we, a teacher can go into, it's manually, but a teacher goes in, and this is what we're working on is recording all of our, all of our classes are listed as, as hybrid. So a teacher would go into Canvas, look and we use a mastery model or the hours like a quiz is worth or all quit like we've decided by program all quizzes are worth so you've assigned a uh, time value to every activity right because you if you leave canvas open in a browser you'll have 20 hours that day so right. you can't not like burlington english counts working right. so uh, interaction interaction i don't know if that so what we're what the asap component is that could be better and maybe someday it will be, but we go We're into not. Canvas and, and you, you pull out what students did what, and then assign time. And then that goes into ASAP when you do your attendance. So you, you basically created like a basic log of time to activity. Yes, across our, it, it has to go across all the, all the classes, but that's how that works. Michelle, you have your hand up, Michelle? Yeah, so my question is our our biggest struggle that we're trying to work through is um, email addresses with our students. So we have our own email address, but it's not in ASAP. And so our teachers are struggling through that. So I was just wondering if there is a solution for that. You have an excited Marcy. Right yeah, I know, but Tanya's hand is up too, so I don't know. I want it, but I was hoping someone would ask this question. So what happens is students get assigned, and it might it's probably totally different at the community is, college, yeah. but <laughs> so students get assigned, uh, when they register, they get assigned a school email. And so what we did first is we established single sign-on. So they log into our their my CNUS, the district website, they click on Canvas, and then they're in. But what we recognized is that like student at cnusd.edu, whatever, those students were never ever accessing that email at home. It was like lived in somewhere they could, it's not in their face. And so against, we kind of like drove upstream to do this, but we, change it so that we give all of the students their username and their access point is their personal email address, whatever they give us, whatever's in ASAP, that comes from that CSV file. So uh, now their student at, at like student one, two, three at Gmail or Hotmail or whatever they are. So when we establish that, everything changed yes. because then the student goes to their email, and says, hey, welcome to ESL and Mass. Click here. There's an email from Instructure that says, and it's right there at their, re their normal real email. The other thing we did that's upstream that no IT person would recommend <laughs> is we give everyone the same password. I know this is a tech conference and that's like not best practice, but for, for <laughs> us, do, yeah, for us, it, it, it was its best practice. And so we give everyone the same password. If they're savvy enough, they can go in and change it. It's fine. Right, right. But everyone, and so when the teacher, they're in the classroom, they say, I can't log in, I can't log in. The teacher opens ASAP, looks up their, their username, their email, and then can identify this is your, so it's all, the trick is that CSV file. So there's a yeah. question just, okay, we used to push to put them to use their school ID, which is also a Google, account yeah so when you go to the personal and we, i've been we've been doing a bit of that too and um but then what do you do when you know, with an authorization if the, there's assignments made in google how do you deal with that so we don't we don't use google at all <laughs> we don't use google at all so okay yeah, and i've been moving away from that i mean we used to think oh this is really cool this cool integration but then they had to use their school email, as you say, often yeah. they never go to it or 
Um, Tons so of you privacy. just don't use the Google. I mean, I've been, I've realized that some teachers don't even know how to take advantage of the Google Docs. And, Right. So I've been having them uh, just well, if you want to do writing rather than using the, the cool Google tools, just you do an online text entry or make a discussion. Yeah. To simplify it. Yeah. So you just don't use Google. That's what I mean. I mean, some teachers might use it for assignments in their canvas. I guess I don't, yeah. I don't have, I'm more at like the back end side of things. So okay. I maybe need to get back to you on that. But in general, we don't, and our, our, we don't access it. And Tanya, how about your site? Um, I actually had my hand raised because I was going to respond to the um, what does it mean when our agency has been implemented successfully. Um, oh, so I wanted to um, you. Just add, you. A little, <laughs> add a little something to that. But what I will say about the you know emails and all is that it's been very tricky for us. So I you know use Canvas um, from a teacherly perspective in my community colleges, and it's like much much easier, right? They get an automatic email and all of that. But on the adult ed side, it's very different. We have, you know, we are, our adult school is connected to the Google Drive or Google email with the district, but it's not adult ed friendly at all. We've had so much trouble with it, right? So we really don't use it. Um, and um, there are a lot of restrictions around it. So uh, we're still trying to make sense of that um, when we do enroll students, um, what that's going to look like. Uh, but the trainings that have been provided, they do provide a lot of um steps in terms of how to do that how to you know have it talk to asap and give student id numbers and all of that so i'm not looking forward to that and that's why we are um trying to train the office staff so that they can you know hopefully um deal with that part of it um but in terms of i just wanted to add one thing to what the other said about what success will look like um for our school and for me what success would look like is that we are contributing to Canvas Commons uh, because, um, you know, I go to Canvas Commons daily uh, for whatever reason, for either my adult school stuff or my community college stuff. And there just isn't or doesn't seem to be enough um, available, enough sharing out there among adult schools and um, among, uh, you know, um, adding materials or EL civics or um, whatever it is. Um, it's either really hard to find or it's outdated, you know, it was done like, uh, you know, at the top of the pandemic, um, or there's just nothing there. So I success for me looks like um, our adult school is sharing into commons where other adult schools can um, benefit from that. Nice. Any questions from, from that? Thank you for bringing up commons too, Tanya. Uh, what about, so, yeah, go ahead. If I may, so, the, so you're, Commentary right now would kind of match my question to Marcy about I could go into Canvas Commons and I could be pulling out lessons and, and mm -hmm. utilizing those and seeing how it all comes together, see how it works, and those would be positive models for me. Some of them. Absolutely. And and mm -hmm. just um your search words are important. <laughs> um and again, people, you know, it's really wonderful. Uh, but the way that people house it or what they call it is, you know, important. So if you're looking for a co-op, for example, it could be called the topic or it could be called um, the number of the co-op, right? Um, or something else, you know, completely differently. So there's a lot of, there's a lot available out there, um, but you have to know, um, I guess, where to look. And I, from my perspective, I don't think there's enough specifically for adult ed. And, and I mean, K-12 adult ed, um, not community college adult ed. So would, just as a, a question for all of you, would you wish that our CDLC Canvas Commons had just a adult ed filter? Yes. <laughs> okay. yes. Yes? Yes. Yes. So it would just be adult ed. It, would, it wouldn't be a closed. It would just be anyone that's part of our CDL, like Commons. Yeah, and I think that I mean, all students, right, whether they're eight or 80, they're trying to learn about email, they're trying to learn about technology. And so sometimes you can go to Commons and you're just looking for um, how to teach some digital literacy skills, right? But often what you're finding are materials that are more geared toward um, children, right? Or a K-12 program, um, maybe even a community college program. And so yes, to have something that's specifically for adult learners, 
Um, and I know that things like North Star, they're, they're working on trying to get you know, um, integrated with Canvas. Uh, but that's been what I have found, you know, for years, frankly, that the materials and instructional materials available for adult students um, can be difficult to find. Absolutely. Anyone have any questions so far that haven't been answered? We have about we have we have about ten minutes. Oh, yes. So I want to. Um, anyone like this question, or do you want us to pass? What advice would you give? Agencies first beginning the process. Tanya, do you want to start? Oh, yes. <laughs> Let me get my <laughs> list. Um, I would say, um, what question number is this? Number three, uh, that um, don't leave anyone out. Um, have a can do attitude. You know, a principal of mine years ago um, said his best advice was to try to say yes. Um, and that's been sort of the lens that I have um, moved from there is to try to say yes. So to try to, when a teacher is reticent or whatever, um, try to meet them where they are um, and just have a can-do attitude. We can do this. Um, and uh, I think I said this at the beginning, to be willing to pivot. Uh, we have pivoted and turned around twice, um, multiple times. Um, lastly, it would be to have um, you know, buy in from someone. If you have just one person who is willing to go along for the ride with you, um, that would be, that is some advice that I would offer. Monica and then Marcy, what would yeah, your advice be? Um, everything Tanya just said, I will echo that. Um, and then also our, one thing that really helped our faculty, I would say, just continue to offer professional development. Don't just say, oh, we're going to offer it for, you know, one month and then everyone's, everyone knows cameras and we're good to go. Um, it's right. definitely, you know, something that needs to continue. Um, but also we have, I think Tanya also mentioned this, where they have learning communities. And so we have level, we have committee meetings, but we also have level meetups, which are very informal online meetings of their faculty led faculty members only. And it's just a safe place for us to talk about what's working, what's not. We do a lot of Canvas showcases and Canvas tours, and people are proud of what they've created with their Canvas shells, and they want to show everyone and share their ideas. And so that really provides a safe space for them to do that, and it gives everyone else ideas of you know what what's possible with Canvas, and gets everyone excited. Like they're using a new tool, and they've decided to organize their modules a different way, and everyone's like, "Ooh, that's so cool! I want to do that." So um, definitely would recommend you know not only admin professional development but just faculty led professional development okay. yeah that, that raise the issue but when you say professional development is it do you pay the faculty for not we have flex hours so unfortunately faculty are not getting paid but that is part of their requirement for teaching is flex yeah so okay. yeah you have to pay them yeah you have to get your administrator it has to be paid and so, you have to. And so, that needs to be built in. That was one thing I was just going to say. Make sure that 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 basically the pain shows top from the top that it's supported. And so, if it's like, hey, this is really great, we love it, we want you to do it and do it all in your free time, that means it's not supported in the right. top. So, mm -hmm. you have to be paid. And then, my uh, my other piece of advice. Professional development ongoing, absolutely, but then also technical support. And it can't just be one person because they're. they're... Uh, I was thinking about our, our tech person who's like strict. So yeah. yeah. Three campuses. Yeah. And he's constantly running from, yes. you know, day up, you know, from the beginning to the end of every day. Yes. And this, uh, so we have a teacher, teacher tech team. It's, uh, and actually, I'd like to get some um, classified staff on the team as well. And we have a ticket system. And so we created like a little Google form ticket system. Don't don't send your technical support to the district. Send it straight to us. And then we follow up with that. And it helps to share the load. And it, and it's essential because we have all different levels of Canvas literacy and meeting support. So, Michelle, you have your hand up. 
Yeah, so one of the things that kind of got us started on Canvas, and we we are just just beginning, but um, we brought somebody in to train our office staff, and we created a training for teachers, like how to do time cards and who's who at PSA. How do you get the support that you need? Um, how to, how to um, do your TE training and what's required. And so we're still learning and yeah, there's been some bumps and bruises along the way, but it's really, it's really brought our staff on board to kind of learn this. And so that's been exciting because I, I don't feel like I'm going through it on my own. We're all kind of learning. Um, and then we, we ended up getting a teacher from the high school to help us we, we did this before, we're still going through the implementation process, but we had um, a teacher at the high school who's been using it and she teaches online and everybody really likes her and it's click. So that's helped a lot. So I, I just wanted to share that that's how we got our, our office staff on board because because they got excited about this and getting our teachers trained, like what they need to do in, in the office and, and how to interact with us. So. All right, nice. Uh, so we don't need that. And then did we did we cover how does your agency help students become familiar with technology in Canvas? I actually have a fail I'd like to share. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so we great. invested a lot of time and money in building this steps to success class. And it's basically a pre-class. And, and the idea behind it is fantastic. It's a class like an onboarding, an on-ramp. So students come to this class, they learn, they get onboarded into whatever element, well, Edgenuity or Canvas, they get their Burlington account, they set objectives and goals, and it's all wonderful. Uh, we put a lot of development and time we into call it. We called it Steps for Success. Mm -hmm. They, they, it was actually like ended up being steps to nowhere because we, <laughs> we, we did not uh, implement it with fidelity. We, it was like, and if you want, here's this great option. And students just said, no, I want to start my class. I don't want to wait two weeks to get onboarded. I want to start my class. I want to start it now. And there's always already a waiting game with getting the logins and from registration enrollment. So the idea is very good because the question is, and, and like, how do you support students? Well, that, that load is a lot for each teacher, especially if you have open enrollment. It's a heavy load, like, oh, great, I got three new people. I have to train them and teach my lesson. So the idea was they come in trained. But you, if you're going to do that, we have a great formula we can give you, steps for success, but you have to use it and get everyone saying, hey, after you enroll here, then you can go. So now we're looking at it differently and we're going to reduce it to just the, the absolute minimum and put it in our orientation. So steps, like it just didn't work. Thank Who's you. providing your orientation? What's that? Who's providing your orientation? Is this, is this the sorry. office personnel? Is the yes. teacher? Oh, so it's the, it's <laughs> the administrator? Sorry, I'm like, who's here? Um, so it's a you, we have staff, both office and teachers that do the registration. And then our registration is uh, run, they listen to a Nearpod, watch it on a computer screen individually, like a hard way. So does yeah. that answer your question? Yeah, um, but in your new version, it, it's how long in total? And what are you introducing to them? So in the orientation? Yeah. So there we're actually presenting on our orientation here at OTAN. You've got to go see. So I'll, oh, what says in the sense? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not presenting, but our school is. So I'll look it up and give it to you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that was a good plug. It's the system's really good, but you'll notice it doesn't have that steps to success because that didn't work for us. Is it the orientation that sticks? An orientation Christina? that sticks. It's session six. Tomorrow. And Christina is a Canvas subject matter expert for Jeez, OTAN. Really good. And if you're implementing OTAN, you want Christina Hyatt to be your new best friend. Yes. She <laughs> knows everything about it. And she created most of our 
our resources that live online to help teachers. But anyway, that exactly. I just wanted and to say the math person too. Thank you. Yeah. Second six. Yeah. And I will say that we also so we developed a digital literacy orientation, and ours is led by our project assistants. Um, and they are, it's a one and a half to two hour orientation. Students can bring their own device, which was so important. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then the project assistant can actually, there's actually two project assistants for each orientation. Wow. They can give hands on help with students to get their Canvas app, Zoom app, and know how to check their email. So we focus on those three points in our orientation. Tell, tell me what is, what is the work classification of your project? They well, um, are they instructor level? So they were, office? yeah. So they they're they were instructional assistants. They all got promoted to project assistant. Got it. Um, but they some of them work directly in the classroom okay. with our faculty, okay. and then most of them are working at registration okay. and enrollment with students. Okay. And we're looking to transfer ours. Are you K twelve? Yeah. K twelve. Tor Torrance. Torrance. Oh, that's right, Torrance. We're looking to, instead of having it be teacher led, we're looking at para educator. Yeah. Agree with you. <laughs> Any questions um, from uh, so? I, I do also want to just say one other thing is that we partnered with San Diego, City of San Diego Digital Navigators. And so that's something that you could look into. And so now we have a digital navigator who comes to two of our campuses three times a week and holds open office hours for students, both in person what are, and What online. is that organization? Um, so this one is through the San Diego Futures Foundation, but I think every city, every region has digital navigators that are helping. So um, Jerry Young should even on, if, if he's giving a presentation on digital navigators. Um, he was from West um, Sacramento Grant Unified um, Highlands Charter. So he's in here as well. Um, any other additions um, from you, Tanya? Do you think? I just wanted to um, say that we're trying to help our students become familiar with technology and Canvas by focusing on the teachers because it's and and then that's how we started. But now we're trying to sort of focus on both uh, because because teachers are you know not comfortable with technology. Of course, that rolls into the students um, sometimes as well in terms of them thinking that you know the students can't do it. Um, and so we pivoted there and tried now to focus on the students by developing a distance ed uh, program where students will be able to participate um, and have those technology skills before they, um, um, well, I guess while they are in the classroom. So it's sort of in um, flux right now. We're trying to figure this aspect out. Um, part of it is we're able to um, help with it because digital literacy is um, important for our consortium. And so they've been very helpful in helping with funding and all of that, right, and uh, resources. And um, digital literacy is our new uh, EL civics objective. So therefore we can focus on that with that group of students and then hopefully help to you know, transfer that into um, Canvas. So I love this question because really it's technology and Canvas together, right? It's not just technology or just Canvas, they go hand in hand. And I think that we had to learn that kind of the hard way. We thought, well, okay, let's jump into Canvas, but oh wait, how do we, make sure that these students are ready for it, let alone the teachers. That's a good point. How does your agency provide access within the Canvas platform? And I love Monica's question. She had emailed me back when I sent them the questions and she said, what do you mean by access? And I mean, I mean, any way you want to interpret it, not just accessibility, but digital, you know, people with do they have phones or Wi-Fi hotspots or accessibility? Wh wh whichever way and however way you define accessibility could be, you know, like learning challenges, but it also could just be digital um, access. So anyone want to start there? I appreciated this question because I think I hadn't thought about it for a while. And that's dangerous, right? It's dangerous to not think about accessibility. But after 
contemplation, I we have like the Chromebooks and the hotspots for our students. We have laptops in every classroom. And then we have basic computers classes in Spanish and English, but we also have the screen reader is turned on in the Canvas. The immersive reader. The immersive reader thing. is turned on. And it's something that I would look for. We're sending teachers to InstructureCon, which can I just please plug that? If you have an administrator that would send you, that's where I really just learned so much. But it's the Canvas conference. It's in Colorado. If it's, it's in July, the 24th, 5th, and 6th. If someone will send you, it's not cheap, but if someone will send you, it is valuable. Um, and for all levels. And so that would be something at that conference that I think they, I would almost guarantee that they would have presentations on accessibility where we could learn more how we could do better. Thanks. Uh, and Tanya or Monica? Well, uh, Tanya, she will. Okay, Tanya. Oh, no, my hand's not up. Um, we are, we're getting there. <laughs> we have focused on that. I had the same question. I think you said Monica had the question. I was thinking access. Um, what did you mean by access? But uh, accessibility or like, you know, access in terms of um, Chromebooks and all of that, which we do have for our students. Um, but we have a distance ed work group. And in that work group, we have focused on um, accessibility issues um, like the immersive reader and, and going through the training behind that. But really it's um, learning by doing, you know, there isn't an expert uh, training us. We are learning all together and trying to understand these issues um, before we jump fully in uh, to Canvas and dealing with that. Um, so that's really all that I had to contribute on this question. Okay, thank you. Any questions for our panel? Um, right. No, it's necessarily related, but you guys have um, who, who is the administrator over Canvas on your site? Like, you have a dedicated person, we have a and team. that's an exclusive job. So, you have a team. Well, I would assume everything at the college is all Canvas, so that right. makes more sense. So, we have our tech team, we have three administrators on our like our tech team, three people have the accessibility to be administrators. I think I am, but I don't do the administrator. We have one person, Christina Hyatt, that really is the key, but she's listed as the administrator. And again, make friends with Christina. <laughs> They'll give you like all of our, anything, but yeah. So we have a few people because you need people with that level of access to, you need more than one, like if that person's on vacation or you need more than one administrator on it. And then, um, so yeah. like hard technical background people, like tech yeah. people, or people who are teachers, hardcore users. They're like, teachers users and, and they're techie teachers mm -hmm. and lovers of Canvas. And then I was going to say, we do have teachers that are like emergent leaders. And so what we've done is we've allowed, we, we, you can scaffold how much permission you give teachers to do things. And so what we do is we do a quick orientation that it's in um, near pot or something where if, as soon as they watch that then we allow them to reset student passwords and have more take more license within the program and so building a building bench. building yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. building a bench Any right now, like i'm our administrator it used to be the ESL supervisor was, and then he wanted to get rid of it and gave it to me and so they closed one of my classes and i get six hours a week but then for other trainings and things, we bring in other teachers. And as more and more people get involved, I mean, it's, you know, I won't be able to do it. No. Long, so no. So. You either need a helpers or yeah. full-time. Right. So we take the people who are getting on board with it, more open-minded and have some skills and get them to try, try to help out in the trainings. I would love to see a full-time classified employee be the administrator because they're on they're there and they like see people all the time coming in and out because our teachers that are always everywhere and so I think that would be if I were at the beginning I would of things I would look at that like how can I build in more 
classified support, even though they're not teachers, because they're the ones that get the phone yeah, calls. So, they're the, so I think I've looked more into that. And Magic Wand, yes, yeah. if you had that. Um, and another problem is that my, my six hours are in the middle of the afternoon, which is kind of a slow time in adult ed. Yeah. So we're trying to push the administration to get either a teacher or a, or a better educator into the computer labs in the morning and in the evening to really to support, not just right. to train, but to be there. Walk all the students morning. are in the room, help troubleshoot with things, you know, the teachers need help, I think, to really get everyone going. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just running from person to person to person all day. The technical support may be your And okay, come on, come on. Our last question. There we go. And I think we you you touched the panel touched on this, but how have you created comfort for educators first learning? I've heard I heard I feel like all of our panelists are have that open hearted let's we're all in it together learning type of yes. Don, you want to go first? Sure. So I think um, when we have our uh, learning community meetings, we record those meetings. Uh, but the beginning of those meetings, um, we intentionally uh, stop the recording so that um, it's uh, space <laughs> to vent. Um, it's a limited time because, you know, sometimes if you give people space to vent, they'll take up all the time doing that. Um, that's not what it's for, but it's just to be um, honest about your frustration so that you're not feeling alone with it. Um, you know, it's uh, we established norms and all of that, you know, which include things like, you know, not um, judging people, basically, like this is how I feel today. <laughs> Tomorrow, I might feel differently, you know. Um, but no that no combined, yeah. say again. No canvas shaming. That's right. No canvas shaming and no tech shaming as well. Because I think uh, the gentleman that asked the question uh, earlier, you know, our just thinking outside the box is just like the biggest uh, piece of advice I can offer, right? So I'm considered the canvas lead, uh, but by no means am I a tech lead. <laughs> um, so there are two different things for me, right? I'm also at the Canvas lead, I'm 100% remote. Um, so I do go in, so I am with Santa Monica, but I, which is in um, deep in Los Angeles area, uh, but I'm in Orange County. And so it is really quite the drive, but there are times, especially when we were first starting this, where I went in face to face, but anyway, you can, you don't have to be the model where it's just, uh, or at least hopefully have an administrator who will let you do that, right? Think a little bit outside the box in terms of what people's roles are. Um, so uh, anyway, creating comfort for educators is really just, I think, reassuring them, offering them the space and agency to uh, speak their minds um, and um, meeting them where they are and you know, not making them feel, uh, you know, um, like there are dumb questions or whatever, not at all. Um, and uh, I think just that's what we've tried to do. And really, like I said, moving very slowly. And when a teacher says, this is just too much, we've got accreditation, we've got this, we've got that, I, I can't do this right now. Okay, when do you think we can do it? You know, um, I, I think that's been uh, the attitude that we've tried to have. Um, so that's it. Fantastic. Um, so I talked about other professional development opportunities that our faculty have, but one thing that we've done that I haven't mentioned is we offer mentoring tech, technology mentoring hours, and we actually use the tool in Canvas Student Connect so that faculty sign up for an appointment with one of the mentors, and they are also, you know, at the same time, they're learning about this new cool tool, Student Connect, in Canvas that they can use with their students, so it kind of serves two purposes, but we have, we usually have 30-minute mentoring sessions. I'm the technology coordinator, so I have to offer a few of those every week. We have a digital literacy coordinator that offers a few mentoring sessions. And then we also have a team for all of continuing education of online faculty mentors that also offer times every week for 
individuals to meet one on one. All of these sessions are usually offered through Zoom, so it's very convenient, very easy for a faculty, and they get a lot of their Canvas questions answered, but we help with all technology. So if they have questions about Zoom or any ed tech tools, then we can offer support. Um, okay. um, I guess I've been sharing a lot of our mishaps and I would like to share that in, in the beginning, I think I came in too hot. I came in too excited about it. I was really like, this is so fun. We're all going to get on it. Your students are going to love it. It's on their phones and it's easy. And it's so unfair for me to say all of those statements are not true. It's not, it might be easy for me one day and another day it's not, but for some teachers, it's never easy. It's never easy. And so I think um, I love that Tanya mentioned the setting norms and giving space for the hard discussions. Like, like there were tears in 2018, 2019 when this was happening. So I look back and I'm disappointed in myself for being so like, everybody's going to love me. Like, like. It was, um, I set the wrong expectation. Go ahead. I so appreciate yeah. what you just so said right now. So transport yourself back to 2018. And what would you say initially to all your people? I would say anything. What are you doing? What would I say to them? Yeah. Or what's the why? No, well, yeah. Well, what would you say to them? And why? And why are we working on this transition? Yeah. I would say the end game is that it benefits students in their transitional need. And a lot of their student, their children are using Canvas. So that it was the right choice for an LMS. LMS is necessary. It's the right choice. If I could go back, I would do the whole, I would have this mindset of guess what team? Anything that's really hard produces generally really great. Like if we're going to do something really great going to be a lot of work but it, the the output is going to be worth it and so I think I would I would preface it instead of like this is so great and fun but the ultimate reason is that transitional our students use their cell phones more than anything else and canvas is the choice for cell phones and for that transitional piece that's for students K 12 K 12 has canvas also on your it depends on your district our our K -12 district does okay but, uh, but Tony Thurman, the superintendent, I came from K-12. I, I taught adult ed for nine years, but I was in K-12 for most, most of my things. And we, yeah, there, uh, Tony Thurman just basically said the superintendent, Canvas across yeah. the board. When does that ever happen in California where one thing for everyone, which is so great. But if you, know? you, if you don't establish the norms and give space for the frustration conversation, those conversations, they still happen, right. but they don't happen in a in a space where it can be redirected mm -hmm. or the problems can be addressed. Mm -hmm. And then when they happen somewhere else, then the, it's a little bit like an infection. And so it wasn't all rainbows like I wanted it to be. And so the sticking with those norms and giving the space like, okay, we're going to talk about it. What's hard? That is such a hard thing to do because some of us are change makers. We're like ready. I'm yeah. always ready. I, I love it. I'm a change maker. That's just, it can be so irritating. But we're not all like that. Here and and then you get the people that you're just like, come on. And they're just like, ah, you know, yes. it's, it's thank you for sharing that. Yes. I, I love what you said, Marcy, Um, because I, I feel the same. I'll jump into something and I want everybody to be able to yeah. do it. But um, I think it's just so important to foster instead of the us versus them, but it's all us. Yeah. And, um, you know, some of us are more challenged than other, others, but but we can do it. And, mm -hmm. and with that attitude, I think it's easier to get them to swallow the pill. Yeah. Uh -huh. So within our last few minutes, uh, we I first of all want to let's give our panelists a I really appreciate each of you and your experience and coming in and talking with us. It's just so valuable. So thank you.